Uh, what's up, everyone? Um, so I have a couple additions to my i3 config that I think people might be interested in. Uh, and before anyone asks, yeah, we're going to have a fuller rising video coming out. I'm on vacation right now. I don't have my uh, the laptop that I have a fresh install on, so I just have my normal machine here. Uh, but let me show you some of the stuff I'm adding right now. Um, just some little stuff. First off, um, I used to have like my key remappings done in X init instead of here. But since I only use i3 and nothing else, I figured, oh, I might as well just do them in the i3 config. So I have one less file left to worry about. So for example, I now have a command that runs that uh, will remap caps, uh, you know, caps lock to escape. That really helps with Vim. Um, I used to have that in another file. Now it's here. Uh, and, you know, and this one remaps, uh, what is it, the the um, menu button to another super key. So that's nice. I just added those just, you know, to kind of have everything in one place. Uh, but that's not that's not super interesting. Uh, one of the things that I've added is, uh, well, let me show you the problem. If you're using i3, uh, you might know, or specifically i3 gaps. i3 gaps is not compatible with, like, the Windows borders that are normally around i3 uh, tool or, or windows. Uh, so you, and because those show you which window you're actively on, it's a little difficult to tell which window you're on if you have a bunch up. So, you know, in a situation like this, I might forget where I've moved to. So I've made this little script and I've mapped it to mod plus uh, grave and mod plus backspace. And if I press it, what happens is the window I'm selected, uh, I have selected just sort of flashes. Um, and that's just sort of just to indicate like where you are. Uh, to, so to show you what actually that is doing, all it is is it's using the transset command. Uh, you can just download this; it's you know out there, um, and it just like increases op or decreases opacity and increases it sort of you know two times, nice and quick in you know half a second, just so you know where you are. So that's a nice little thing that you know helps you in a pinch. Uh, so that's one part. Um, let's see what else. So I also uh, made some changes to my screencasting commands sort of to make them more universal. So originally I just had like a big screencast command like written out here. And of course I map it to like one button. So whenever I press the pause button on my ThinkPad, it I mean, it automatically starts uh, recording. Uh, I mean, this is what I have running right now. Uh, but I actually changed the command. Now it's a bash script that's a little, uh, a little better in two respects. One is that it chooses the file name smartly. So it used to just go to like output.mkv. Um, uh, that's what it's doing right now. Uh, but now I have it so that if, if I already have an output file, it'll just uh, make it output underscore one or output underscore two. If, you know, that way I don't have anything overwriting. I never accidentally overwrit, overwrote anything, but you know, it's nice to be safe. And the, the other optimization is I now have this little line here uh, which um, it used to be I just told it use my screen resolution, but now it automatically finds the screen re resolution. So I can use this command on like different machines or different screens now, so that's nice. Uh, I don't have to manually change it. And the same is true with the audio in terms of like it now is smart named, so I don't have to really think about that. So that's another optimization um, sort of in my, my scripts. And another thing I'm going to add later, I haven't totally finished it. I mean, I have like a sort of a working version of it. Just a little bash script, you feed it like a directory and an interval, and it'll loop through all the different um, wallpapers in that folder and set them as your background. So uh, I don't have that active now. I'm still, uh, you know, it works right now. I just want it to be a little better in different ways. So, um, you know, I might not put that one out yet. Uh, but the big optimization, or at least like the interesting one I've added is, um, I finally made use of the scratch pad. And you might not know about this. Oh, sorry, that was my dryer. You might not know about this thing. It's um, like this little thing i3 has where it can hide away windows in sort of like, well, a scratch pad. Uh, anyway, I'll just show you how it works. Um, so what happens is what these commands do is like when i3 starts, um, it automatically pulls up a terminal window, names it drop down, and starts tmux in it just because I wanted it like that. And then it hide it you know, hides this instance of dropdown. Well, first off, it makes it floating, and then it hides it on a scratch pad. And how the scratch pad works is when you show the scratch pad, the, wind the scratch pad windows appear, then you can hide it again, and then they're gone. 
Uh, so long story short, I've mapped mod U to show the scratch pad. If I press that, the Tmux window will come up. And what I can do is, this is basically like a drop-down terminal. So I can, you know, update. I have some updates up here, so we can go ahead and do some updating. Now, if I press Control or uh, Mod U again, it'll disappear. Um, and if I'm on another window, I press Mod U again, and here it is. Um, so that's really nice. It's it's really nice. Um, I use it for, for a couple things, background scripts, or like, uh, you know, sometimes I might... Uh, pull up a calculator and, you know, just if I forget what 2 plus 2 is or something like that. Um, so, yeah, that that is definitely a nice little thing to have, uh, which I definitely use. It's nice not having to pull up an extra window just when I need to have to, if I have like five windows up and I don't want to mess up my uh, settings, you know, I don't want to pull another window up. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the additions I've put on now. And uh, I'll probably put, yeah, I'll put the new i3 config in the the video description along with the uh, scripts that I have in here so far. So anyway, thanks for watching. And yeah, Fuller Rice is coming soon along with other videos. I'm actually working on a couple things right now. Uh, sorry for the slower update. I've had like work and school and all this stuff. I'm working on a qualifying paper and stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, have a good one. See you around.